And we're here with Hank Mike Colesco, who was the, uh, you see him on the far right there, he was the uh, team manager of the 61 team. So let us know what's going on here, Hank. Okay, that's Kenny Bartoyce on the far left next to the coach. And this is near Calumet Country Club on 175th and, what is that, Dixie Highway, there we go. And this is where everybody, uh, all the supporters met the team as we came back. This is before they had the big buses and uh, I think we went down on four or five cars with the coaches and the assistant coaches. So You notice the old time cars with the big, big fins in the late 50s. Well, we were all going to the moon, right? We're going to yeah, fly. Yeah, there's the know. old fashioned police car with the, we used to call them the cherry. Here comes the cherry oh. <laughs> with the red light. Here's some poor soul almost getting run over by into the mud, a little ditch on the side. That's right on the east side of uh, Calumet Country Club. We're boat managers, the <laughs> caddy, Kenny Bartosh and myself. Now you'll see a gas, gasoline sign up on the right, standard Amico. Take a look at that. 29 cents. <laughs> Here's a camera crew Chevrolet truck. And that's the camera crew filming this. Right, right, we have, right. Uh, movies from two sources. Now a few cars directly behind the police were all the team members and then all the fans followed up. There's Al Daynard, I right, think. Right, that's Al Daynard. But what a crowd. I mean, look at the interest that the people had. Oh, this is, the whole South suburbs were, were rooting for us. And uh, this is the day when we had kids from home with that would go to Thornton. I mean, the, the districts were so well spread out. And that's 175th and Dixie Highway in the background at that Phillips 66. That's right where Sermers is today, or uh, what is it, Sermers, or used to be Sermers on the left. And people and signs were out everywhere. The whole parade route was just packed with people from the neighborhood and people with signs. And There's the First National Bank on the left. You're looking west down 154th. Those days they didn't have the, what do they call it, the angle parking or <laughs> this is how they park. You see just car after car park. And you see the old Miller's Cleaners and Hatters sign in the back. If There's you Marv down. Keeling just waving out there. And the hairstyles in those days were crew cuts or flat tops or Detroit. <laughs> The same scene from a different camera. You'll see the Walgreens on the left. Yeah, the sirens were blaring. Here's the Walgreens. That was on a south side of the street, right to the next one. Is it the old city hall on the street there? Mm hmm. It wasn't good film, but you take what you can get in old home movies. There's Thornton Jim. And that gym was built in 49. It's, it was 30 years ahead of its time. It's still practical today. Seating uh, the amount of people you can put in there in a the line of sight, fantastic. Here comes two latecomers trying to get in. <laughs> and people came from other schools. Because it was a big thing. It was actually the first championship or second place in the South Suburbs in years. All right, here comes the team pulling up. It's Johnny McKibben, the light cult, Al Dater.
Bob Caress, he's a uh, quarterback of football team in all state and I think baseball and basketball. There's Coach Bob Anderson with the sweater on. Al Gaynert with the trophy. This is a real sunny day and a little chilly, but I didn't notice at the time, but it was like the White Sox Stadium, if you looked at the head, there's a big bunch of fireworks up in, the, up in the sky and everybody turns their head, so you'll see that in a second. Yeah, they pulled out all the stops, boy. Well, they hadn't won a state championship. Well, actually, 1935 was their last state appearance. Yeah, 30, they, they played three years in a row downstate, 33, 34, was it 4 and 35, with a little broad row. And they called them the Flying Clouds at that time. And that's when he had a center jump. And a typical score would be like 15 to 12 or somewhere on there. Here's or, the fireworks. Okay, you notice everybody's turning their head up skyward. <laughs> they didn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> and the gym was already packed. And there must have been a thousand people outside just waiting to see the team congratulate them on their accomplishments. I love them haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Detroit's flap tops. Crew cut. There's Marv Killing, Marv Killing with the dark rim glasses. That's Hank Michalowski and Kenny Bartosz right there, two managers. Jack Jackie Dabon. Fast. He was a fast guard. Looks like White Sox Park, don't it? <laughs> That was it. That was the show, folks. <laughs> Very short. <laughs> but it was be better than nothing. And you would think second place, people wouldn't be happy, but uh, they overachieved, didn't they? they went yeah, we know what so people don't realize. Uh, Cowlesville Cahawks, they were they went undefeated and at that time they were so, so impressive that they were voted by the, so all the sports writers in the Champaign Gazette as the greatest high school basketball team ever in the state of Illinois in 1961. They were an unbelievable record. And three, of the, three of the starters played uh, Big Ten ball or uh, Division I basketball. And here's a young fan with the old beanie. <laughs> they finally made it to the <laughs> late, better late than never. There are entrants coming into the into the gym, three thousand five hundred whatever people waiting for us. And they're playing uh, the school song, T-T-H-S, yeah. right? <laughs> well, out of Wisconsin, uh, it's for all you Big Ten fans. Now, if you look in the back in the crowd, there's, this is standing room only, I don't know. Uh, people up against the wall, people up uh, everywhere. That's Tiny House and walking first. He was a football coach and the athletic director. And these guys were tired, folks. <laughs> we played some of like three games in, I don't know how many, 24 hours or less. And we played Springfield Lampfair. They were the defending champion. We beat them in the last minute on a Friday night. Saturday, we beat Marshall, which won two years before that. Al Daynard made the winning shot, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't remember that, but anyway, we played three state champions in 24 hours. Wow. You won two out of three.
There's Lyle Hopkins, well-known band director. Find yourself in the crowd, folks. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> Good looking gal over there. Notice the lectern. It was donated by the class of 50. There's the team. You know, everybody's all wearing ties and well-dressed. What, 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 what were you guys feeling on that stage? Uh, we were in a cloud. We were in a, we were in a zone. Just everything. That whole weekend was just like... It's like the one in the World Series. <laughs> now who's this? Mayor Kane? I think that's Mayor Kane. I'm not positive. Mayor Kane Kane's... of Harvey. Right. There's some of the uh, administration and uh, faculty. We'll name them in a minute. Okay. The guy with the glasses, that's Cliff Massa. He was on the Board of Education and his daughter was a cheerleader. We don't know who this is. We think it was a football player. Could uh, could have been described as a man of Boehner. I think he went to Kankakee later on. Ed Boehner uh, played for uh, Notre Dame, was an All-American in the College Football Hall of Fame. Played for the Chicago Cardinals and the Washington Redskins in the early uh, 1940s and uh, was an All-Pro. Uh oh. Now who's that big guy? I think that could have been Wiselaw. It was a guy of six foot eleven that played for Bloom. I can't forget his first name. But the one player, they come and wish to congratulate us. And they beat you two they times. They beat us twice. They beat us two or three. The last one when I'm really counting, we pulled it out. Boy, he was a big guy. Yeah, six foot eleven. Wow. And that's the school. Bloom was the school of Jerry Colangelo, which was one of the first three-point shooters before anybody ever heard of three-point shooters. And he went on fame to uh, baseball and basketball. And well, he's like the, the owner of uh, the Diamondbacks? Or he the owns General? the Arizona Diamondbacks and he owns the, uh, the, kind of football, the Arizona football team. Does he own them now? He's from the hill, Chicago Heights. A rags to riches story. All hard work. Look at that, Jim. I imagine the people were lined up there one or two hours ahead of time just trying to get a seat. This was when the state championship was in Champaign, so we drove from Champaign all the way up to you seeing us at Columbia Country Club where everybody joined us. And you didn't have the uh, expressway then? So no, there was no expressway. It was, I, I forget, it was it Governor's Highway you just took down? The, that was it, as far as I remember. Here's uh, Hanrahan. Tom Hanrahan was fantastic as far as teaching the fundamentals to the, all the big guys that, that get played for Thornton and went on to play college and uh, pro basketball. He's like the unsung hero. Jim Ard, I think he helped coach Jim Ard and some of these other players. Out. Now Bob Caress went on to play for Cincinnati. Yeah, he was all state in basketball, football, and uh, I think baseball too. Yeah, he was on a starting team at Cincinnati, which is a big accomplishment in those days. Marv lives in Homewood today, as I remember, or at least works. There. Well, I think he, uh, I think he lives in Crete, but he may work in Homewood. Mm -hmm. Renault Banks, he was I think five ten, five eleven, but. He could jump like, <laughs> oh, unbelievable. Freddie Lindsay, but he's our number. He was like a second or third guard guard to come off the bench. Good outside shooter. John McKibben, he's another guy that, that was a three point uh, that shoot him from uh, 
50 yard line. He was unbelievable. And you think that's... Uh, I think that's Ruben Poindexter. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that's Ruben Poindexter. There's the Bloom players in the back. Right, right. A nice gesture, because he had a bad right. rivalry with that. Oh, that was, a, that was like the... That was like the... Uh, the Cubs and the Sox, or the St. Louis and the Cubs, or... Now, Leon was the star of the team, right? Right, right, right. He went on to University of Wyoming with uh, Coach Bird, and went to coach there later on. He was the, the superstar. Who was that? <laughs> it's the two managers in both Caddy, the Caddy Hank club. is the guy speaking, Right, folks. that's me. Coach Bill really built some great basketball teams. Came out um, fourth in the state in 65. I heard Leon later went to Paris, France, and that's about all I know. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because there was a lot of that's what I international heard. basketball. Our Dr. James Logston. Now watch his eyes. Oh, they rolled. <laughs> Somebody must have said something. Homer Renfro who was a great principal even in my time in 68. Very nice guy. Now we think this is Mayor Kane, or Judge Kane. Mayor Kane of Harvey, yeah. And that has to be Ed, Ed Benor, I don't know how I, he Well, we, I said Boehner, Boehner, I don't know, but... Uh, Boehner, okay. All you fans out there, you could write a letter and get all of us. Notre Dame, All-American, uh, class of 39 or so. Lou Boudreau Sr. on the last state championship. 24 years old, he was a player manager of the Cleveland Indians, and they won the World Series. Unbelievable. <laughs> there's a Hollywood story. And there's Joyce Brew, and we think that's the wife of Bill Purden, we're not sure. That's Cliff Massett, he was the Board of Education. And his daughter was a cheerleader, and he was with the uh, Illinois Central PR Department. Is very well known in all different clubs in Harvey. And look over here, see if you see yourself sitting or standing. You could tell your grandkids, "Hey, look at me! I'm over there on the right." <laughs> <laughs> Now, we don't know who this is, so... Probably a school administrator, man. And here's the cheerleaders. Joyce Brew Upton, now, was their coach. And Sharon Boudreau, uh, who you'll see, was the daughter of Lou Boudreau Sr. Right. I think Lou had two daughters, Sharon and there's another one. I think they're both cheerleaders. Well, they won they're a year or two apart. There's Mary Rang. Ring family is well known, and Harvey goes way back. Now the first basketball game I seen at Thornton, my oldest brother was the manager with Tommy Nesbitt, and it was 1957 or 58. I seen the first playoff game at the regional, and Thornton played Morgan Park Military Academy, and we set an all-time record. It was a final score was 128 to 38. So you look at that up, and that lasted a long time, and that's in 32 minutes. <laughs> 128 points. It was it was unbelievable. They're like the Boston Celtics playing the Little Sisters to Poor. <laughs> Cheerleaders did a great job. Now Joyce Brew is going to come up here, and I I did some uh, lip reading. She says uh, she'll say it's time to change. <laughs> you do a good job lip reading. <laughs> Now we think there's sound to this film, but we don't have a projector. 
But here Lou will introduce members of the uh, coaches, staff, and team. There's Dr. Logston. Now this was taken in a gym on a side, on a side room in one of the offices. And I completely forgot all about this. <laughs> but here we are. Now how many g dates did you get from girls after this thing? Don't even talk about that. What? <laughs> <laughs> we were all basketball junkies. <clears throat> How, t <clears throat> how tall was Leon? I think Leon was 6'7". Oh boy. So he played forward? He, play he played center and then... Uh, oh. But he had a jump shot from the corner that you could not stop fall away jump shot. Bob Caress, fantastic ball player. I think he was on a senior... His, I think he was in a varsity his freshman year. I think he played all four years. Because Harvey had a fantastic, and Thornton had a fantastic feeder program from the grade schools. Mm. And about four or five of those guys, like Dallin, Dainer, and Caress, I think they all play for the same school. I don't even recall which school. You can let us know, but uh, they, they, the word was that these guys were the, the team to watch. Wilfred Henry is a fantastic football player, and he was a good rebounder and sixth man. Who's that? There's Hank again. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Bartosz, fantastic offer. Now, this is quite an honor to have uh, Lou Boudreau there. He's a, I think he may have been with uh, W. Gene at that time. And Mayor Kane. Very well, well known hero, Harvey. Mm -hmm. I think his favorite word was, How you doing today, kid? <laughs> I always call everybody kid. <laughs> How you doing, kid? And there was the team from the yearbook. Now you guys overachieved. You weren't even expected to be in the tournament. Right? No, no, you did. Very little chance that we. I mean, the Southern Illinois basketball just dominated. 